Colin Powell was born on April 5, 1937, in the New York City neighborhood of Harlem. As the son of two Jamaican immigrants, he was raised in the polyglot South Bronx. Because of his upbringing, he did not develop a sense of being a minority. He attended church and was a student at the City College of New York. It was at the City College of New York that he had began his military service after joining the Reserve Officer Training Corps. Cohen served two tours in Vietnam where he was wounded twice and received multiple honors for his faithful service. Throughout his military life, he was in a profession that would allow him to go as far as his talents would take him, and for a black man, no other avenue in American society offered so much opportunity. Early in his military career, he was once told, you're the best black lieutenant I've ever seen, to which he answered, thank you very much, sir, but before this is through, I'm going to be the best lieutenant you ever saw. You will not categorize me as the best black lieutenant you ever saw. Cohen also said, never believe the first thing you hear. Later in his United States Army career, Cohen learned who's who, developed a stable of contacts, and was always responsive to a stranger. He refused to put off anyone or ignore any of his soldiers. He wanted each soldier to become an expert in something and a generalist in everything. Cohen wanted to build future leaders under his command. He believed his soldiers' endeavors succeeded or failed because of the people involved. Only by attracting the best people will they accomplish great deeds. Cullen once said, The day the soldiers stop bringing you their problems is the day you stop leading them. They have either lost confidence that you can help them or concluded that you do not care. Either case is a failure of leadership. Colin Powell knows a thing or two about project management. On the front lines of business, military, and politics, he conducted speeches and presentations. But it was ultimately the followers who accomplished their mission or not. Colin was generous with his time and insights. He offered opinions in a down-to-earth and sometimes humorous way, benefiting his description of himself as just a kid from the Bronx. During the late 1980s, while Colin Powell served as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he addressed students at National Defense University on the subject of leadership. He said, the students are leaders in transition, looking forward to positions as generals, admirals in the United States military, at senior executive levels in the government, or as corporate officers in the private sector. As a respected military leader, Colin Powell stated the following while describing himself. You will find an open style. You will find me bouncing in. You will find me wanting to talk to field officers. I want to hear the rough edges of all arguments. I don't want to concur things to death and coordinate things to death, so I get a round pebble instead of a stone that has edges on it. I want to hear from you. I want to get all the great ideas that exist throughout the department. Colin Powell's successful military career culminated during the early 1990s. During the early stages of Operation Desert Storm, he told President George Bush, Mr. President, I wish to God that I could assure you that air power alone could do it, but you can't take that chance. We've got to take the initiative out of the enemy's hands if we are going to go to war. Following his military career retirement in September 1993, Colin Powell was considered witty, erudite, insightful, articulate, and self-depreciating. When Colin Powell declined a presidential run in 1995, Powell declared that running for office was a calling that I do not yet hear. Throughout the late 1990s, Colin Powell wrote his autobiography titled My American Journey, which was published in 1995. With his popularity continuing to gain momentum, he registered as a Republican and gave a speech at the 1996 Republican National Convention. The following year in 1997, 
Colin founded America's Promise, an organization whose goal is to help children from all socioeconomic sectors. Then in 2000, Colin campaigned for George W. Bush for the presidential election. When Colin was nominated and unanimously confirmed as Secretary of State in January 2001, he also appeared to be as popular with the American public as Eisenhower was in his time. He rallied America's allies for military action in Afghanistan after the September 11th terrorist attacks. Then as Secretary of State, Colin Powell delivered this message. We must build a better future even as we deal with the security challenges before us. That is how we'll overcome those challenges because it is not enough to fight against the negative like terrorism. We must focus on what inspires us, on what brings the good people of the world together. We've got to fight for the positive, for liberty, for freedom, for democracy. In the realm of public policy making, Colin said, We need a workforce that is truly reflective of modern American society. To achieve that, we must create opportunities for people from diverse backgrounds to prepare for public service careers. As the Secretary of State, Powell had to earn support for America's war on terrorism. After President Bush forcibly overthrew Saddam Hussein, Colin Powell admitted to the United Nations Security Council, If we had known there were no weapons of mass destruction, there would have been no war. He found in negotiations to always get yourself partially on the side of the other person, understand what they need, and always show respect. No country is unimportant. No person is unimportant. And I think that's the way you should go into a negotiation. Colin Powell had been the first African American to hold the position of Secretary of State. He resigned his position in 2004. He was asked if he considers himself a conservative. Powell said, I never talk politics, and I have not been able to find a perfect fit in either of the two existing parties. Colin was mentioned as a possible running mate for the Republican presidential nominee John McCain in 2008, but instead, he endorsed Barack Obama when he said, We elected a president who happens to be black, just as I was Secretary of State who happened to be black. We don't, or we shouldn't, color code our national leaders. In 2009, Colin criticized the Obama administration for not providing a vision or focusing on the American economy and new jobs. A Gallup poll conducted in 2003 showed that 18% of black Americans viewed Colin Powell as the most important black leader in the country. In second place was Jesse Jackson at 17%. However, 23% of white Americans that year also viewed Colin Powell as the most important black leader in the country. Colin Powell once told young blacks, Don't let your blackness, your minority status, be a problem to you. Let it be a problem to somebody else. If you work hard, do the best you can, take advantage of every opportunity that's put in front of you, success will come your way. Powell's leadership philosophy is simple. Leadership is the art of accomplishing more than the science of management says is possible, and effective leaders are made, not born. Leadership is about followership. Leaders put followers in the best possible environment to accomplish a unit mission or organizational mission. It works in the army. It works in the university. It works in any endeavor in the world where humans come together to achieve a purpose. Leadership and followership are completely enmeshed. It ain't you who gets it done. It's the troops who get it done. There's also no unimportant person in an organization. You have to invest in followers and give them what they need to get the job done. The best leaders are those who can communicate upward the fears and desires of their subordinates and are willing to fight for what is needed. If not, the organization will weaken and crumble. Happiness cannot be achieved solely by amassing possessions or power. Real happiness is a byproduct of serving others. Colin Powell published several books in his life. He has coined several generic leadership phrases that are often cited and used today. 
A couple include, Trust is the essence of leadership. Trying to get everyone to like you is a sign of mediocrity. And don't let adverse facts stand in the way of a good decision. As one of the most influential leaders of the 21st century, Colin Powell has created his 13 rules of leadership. Rule 1. It ain't as bad as you think. It'll look better in the morning. Rule number 2. Get mad, then get over it. Rule 3. Avoid having your ego so close to your position that when your position falls, your ego goes with it. Rule number 4. It can be done. Rule 5. Be careful whom you choose. Rule number 6. Don't let adverse facts stand in the way of a good decision. Rule number 7. You can't make someone else's decisions. You shouldn't let someone else make yours. Rule 8. Inspect small things. Rule 9. Share credit. Rule 10. Remain calm. Be kind. Rule 11. Have a vision. Be demanding. Rule 12. Don't take counsel of your fears and naysayers. Rule number 13. Perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. Colin Powell has been an inspiration to not only African Americans, but to everyone. He demonstrated throughout his life some of the absolute best traits a leader can have. He also believed if people find work they love, display passion, dedication, and hard work, success and recognition will follow. Colin Powell knows the power of language to inspire, motivate, and educate his followers to inspire and transform them into leaders of tomorrow. Thank you.